There's a scandal in your family tree. It's a scandal that's in a lot of our family trees. Some of our ancestors had sex with Neanderthals. I'm El Ashmahi, and here's everything you got wrong about Neanderthals. Let's be honest, if somebody calls you a Neanderthal, they're not being nice, they are probably insulting you. There are all these stereotypes about Neanderthals, right? That they're knuckle-dragging eight men, that they're brutish, that they would just hit you over the head with a massive club. But actually, we now know Neanderthals were incredibly intelligent. They even had bits of symbolism in their culture. There's this one incredible site where they have these stalagmite stalactites in these circles. It's kind of mysterious, but you can imagine it was potentially some kind of cultural meaning. They had impressive stone tools. In fact, some of their technology we stole off them. They walked upright, as upright as you or I. They liked to decorate themselves, kind of liked iridescent feathers, the kind of feathers that are shiny. You can imagine they were maybe beautifying themselves in these incredible feather headdresses and clothes. I get that. Some of us today are wearing jewellery because we also want to look nice. Some of our ancestors had sex with Neanderthals. It's just kind of nice to know that there are uh, some skeletons in the family closet that are quite scandalous. And it's kind of wild to think about. Today, we're the only species left. We're not going to interbreed with anyone other than ourselves. And yet for the ancestors, they had that choice. Our ancestors and the Neanderthals were close enough that they were able to have children. So that means that you have Neanderthal DNA in you, if I was to guess. Most of you have about 2% Neanderthal DNA. Some of you don't have any at all, but most of you have it. There is a good chance that the Neanderthal DNA in us has helped us survive and be successful. When we interbred with them, we were entering into environments that we were not used to. And we would have been facing pathogens, diseases that were quite alien to us. And yet these Neanderthals had spent hundreds of thousands of years adapting to their environment. It's really likely that we picked up immunities from them, but it's also likely that we picked up some technologies from them, or we just picked up knowledge from them. Their legacy is all around us. A lot of people ask why the Neanderthals went extinct. That's a really fair question that we don't actually fully know the answer to. The Neanderthals were probably around a lot longer than we've been around. Neanderthals existed for about 400 thousand years and we've existed for about 300,000 years. We would have to be around for quite a few more years before we're as successful as they were in terms of just how long we've been on this planet. Neanderthals were not the only species of human that we shared the planet with. We were originally really kind of an African species. You had the Neanderthals in Asia and Europe. You had the Denisovans who were further into Asia. You had Homo floresiensis, affectionately nicknamed the Hobbit after the Lord of the Rings characters because they were about a metre tall. When I think about that world, it kind of captures my imagination because we have nothing to compare that to. Our closest living relatives are like the chimpanzees. We don't look into their eyes and see ourselves. Whereas if we looked into the eyes of, let's say, this French Neanderthal, you can't wonder how much would we be able to communicate we know we made love with them. Did we potentially make war with them? There are so many unanswered questions because it is so outside of our reality today to think that we weren't the only ones. Like this is quite literally the only time in our history that we're the only species of human to wander this planet. The biggest misconception that people have about our species, Homo sapiens, is that we were amazing from the very beginning. And it's because we're the only ones left, right? So we're looking around going, all right, well, we made it and the others didn't. And that is a huge thing that our series really delves into. I would call it a revisionist history of our species. Many of those other species were much better adapted to their environments than we were. So then the question is, how did we make it when they didn't? If you want to see us as a protagonist, where there's protagonist that started off as the underdog and somehow went on to not just out-survive all the other species, we thrived. Built the pyramids, invented writing, invented cities. We invented technology, the lights of which could destroy us and the whole planet. 
it's kind of incredible that a species that started from so little, was just one of many, has become this.